Hey guys, it's Baban and I'm back with another speed draw thing and in this one we are going to be making a whole bunch of little emote commissions, most of which are in these little compilations that I'm showing you now. So, here we go! What I'm also going to be doing with this first set of around 11 is to make them into stickers as well, or I think the first lot of the set was where I had to go and edit them into stickers later so that the commissioner could sell them as stickers, and I'm going to be doing it with the second lot of five that was commissioned and making those into sticker shapes straight away and then making sure that they also crop down nicely into emotes. Now the size I work with for emotes is about 800 pixels squared so that I've got enough room to be able to see what I'm doing and not be picking at something really tiny or working with pixels. So the size that they are on the screen right now is 100% zoom so that's about as big as they get which gives me enough room on the screen to be able to do a good job of them and like I say not be picking at individual pixels. It also means that when I do a file of these if I end up tiling them into sort of a grid like I'm doing with these then it doesn't end up being too big of a file. And also, luckily, considering the commissioner decided that they wanted to make stickers out of these as well, um, they're a decent size for that. They're not going to be too small. They are going to be kind of small, but not too small. With these as well, the top row is going to be just flat colours with a tiny little bit of detail on them, and the bottom row is going to be more shaded. And with the shading with these, I still go for the kind of cell shaded style that I use on everything else, but I don't do it in the same way. Um, well, with something bigger where there's just a lot more space to fill, I'll usually do it as a kind of overlay or hard light layer to get the colour on um, and put gradients into. With these, I will go and select the flat colours individually and pick um, specifically the colours that I want to use in the shading and paint those into it and then worry about putting any gradients over the top with overlays because there's not a massive area to fill, there's not going to be a whole bunch of different light sources, it's just to define the form more so it's not anything really really picky. And you'll start to see me just going and filling the flats in now, I've put my base down, I've also got a tutorial for how to do this really quickly in Manga Studio and Clip Studio just to go and select the base for everything and then fill, use the uh, fill tool to fill everything in, so I'll put a link to that at the end if you are also using the same program. I'm also going to be changing the colour of some of the lines in this so that we can have a little bit of variation there and it's all not just solid black. You can see I've done it a little bit already by blocking down some colours onto the eyes, which is something that I usually do just to keep those shapes contained and so that it doesn't go outside of the eye if I decide to do it on a different layer and paint it over the top. Anyways, I'm starting to put all that shading in now just with the colours that I've selected. Uh, another reason that I do go and select the colours individually for these is because they are going to be shrunk down really tiny, so I'll zoom in and out now and then just to check that, but we want enough contrast between that lighting and the shading so that it is still showing the shape up and there's also not too much that it's going to confuse the shape when it gets shrunken down. Also doing the same with the colour of these lines where they were just a little bit too light when I zoomed out there, I was kind of losing the definition just around the bottom of the chins and everything, so they need to be made a little bit of a darker colour later, and then I go and find a colour that's already in it that's kind of dark enough and fit that in, and you see that's still going to read, it's still dark enough um, just around the edges of everything. It kind of helps with the darker hair too, to have that to frame the lighter colours in the face, because depending on the values and colours that you're working with, the sort of usual values that they are, it can be quite difficult to get the shading to define everything correctly and just make it read well when it's shrunken down. Um, what I'm also doing as well is purposefully not shading the eyeballs so that they stand out more. You can see I'm taking a little bit more of that dark off them as well where the overlay was making them a little bit darker because when we zoom out those are the kind of shapes that are going to make the emotion read. So the shape of the eye and the shape of the mouth we want a lot more contrast there so I will just keep it straight white. I won't put any grey shadows on it to maybe lessen the sharpness of that shape a little bit more. And you probably, you probably weren't noticing it until I mentioned it, but you probably notice it now that everything else is shaded apart from the eyeballs. <laughs> and it starts to look a little bit strange, but there is a, definitely a reason for me just completely omitting the shading on those so that they read better. Anyways, we're done with that first chunk and we got commissioned another set of them, another extra five of them to go with the others. So we're going to go and sketch those in and get them done. Some little concepts for the commissioners to check out. 
Something else that I want to mention with these as well is if you're gonna do commissions for emotes and stuff, you've got to take into account obviously like average how long each of them is gonna take you to do. Um, for the simpler ones I don't usually charge as much because they don't take me as long for things with full expressions and faces on them and characters that have got like a little bit more variation in the detail and colouring. But you also want to take into account how long it's going to take to crop them and render them and resize them a bunch of times because each of these I had to resize for three different sizes. So I had to save it as the original file for them and then reload it back up and then change it to the three different sizes that are needed. And especially with the first big set of emotes that I did, which was around 26 of them all together, um, going and doing that three times for each of them, I really didn't account for. And it took me a long time to do it. And of course, with stuff like that, it's inevitable that eventually with one of them, you're going to save the file a little bit wrong. It's going to be like the wrong size. You might type in the wrong kind of pixel size number that you want it to resize to. And you've got to go and fix it. And with, like I said, with that large one, I think I was sat there for between an hour and maybe half an hour, between half an hour and an hour trying to resize everything and save all the files correctly, just typing in file names and making sure that they were all consistent with each other. And I didn't account for it <laughs> before I started, so I, I kind of screwed myself a bit there, but I'm a little bit more aware now, but just, just be aware that that's a thing that you're gonna have to do. Um, and it's gonna take you time just to get all of that done and get all the files saved separately. So for this set of 11, I had to save them 11 times and then I had to resize each of them three times. So that was another 33 times that I had to go and save them for this entire set and all the resizing and everything and typing in the values and file names. So it, it, ta it takes longer than you'd think. Anyways, I'm starting to get the line out finished for these. Let's just go and select around them and then invert that and fill it in so that we've got our base chunks. I've also got a chunk at the back behind these just so I can go and select around that and crop them down into emotes so I can just do a shrink selection around each of the little squares behind these to get that emote size. And also a bit of a larger one just to select around and carve out the bottom edge of the stickers. And like I mentioned, with putting a grid down with these, I will um, make a square on a new file, make sure that it's exactly the pixel size that I want. So I'll make a new file that's 800 by 800. I'll go and block down just a color on that on a single layer so that I've got a single block of color that's the right size. I will copy and paste it into the file that I want to use to do all my emotes. And then I will just put it into a grid like this and just copy paste it until I've got enough spaces and then I will start just sketching over the top of those squares to make sure that I'm aware of the size and shape that they're gonna be because if you just start sketching randomly it's pretty easy to assume that things are either like more rectangly, either go in portrait or landscape and kind of throw in the sizes off a little bit and it just makes it more difficult to fit it properly into the kind of shape that you actually need um, if you don't have that shape right from the start. And I, I think a bad way of going about it as well would to just be do it on a file that is exactly that size so that you don't have the space around the edges because it's going to be easier for you to understand uh, how the thing's fitting into that space if you give a little bit of room around it to fill it out. In the same way that if you sketch in a sketchbook and you get too close to the edge of it, then you're going to try and squash everything in. We do not want to replicate that with digital because we've got all, all the space we need. So just, just make the canvas a bit bigger and give yourself a little bit more room to carry your lines on so that you're not trying to squash things in. You'll thank yourself for it when you're not picking at the corners of your sketches for hours <laughs> when it's like almost done. <laughs> And now I'm just getting into where I'm putting my little overlays over the top just to bring a bit more colour into them. I'm going to bring in some yellow onto that heart to make it a nice kind of peachy colour and also bring a little bit of lime into the mod sword there. Um, this is also going to give me a little bit more variation in the colour and the skin tones as well. So it's going to get a little bit more pink up towards the top where I've got that gradient from the top of that more pinkish colour just down into the more yellowy base colours at the bottom. And they're going to work really, really nice together because pink and yellow are friends. But also green. Pink, pink, yellow and green's pretty nice. And there we go, we're done with that set. Let's shift on to the other one. Now let's go and just clean up the sketch for this one to make sure that it is nice and symmetrical around here and that I like the way that it looks. There's not any issues that I'm going to run into when I do the lines. 
Um, with, with some of these, I will do like a little concept sketch like you can see at the moment and then go and clean it up like I'm doing right now. But with other ones, I'll just go from the concept sketch. It usually depends on how much detail I get from the commissioner and how well the sketch that I've done lines up with what they want. Usually the more info that I get, um, or if we can kind of agree on a specific pose, um, look in a specific way and like the kind of angle of the head tilt and stuff. If that's something that I'm going to be doing, then it's a little bit easier to get it the first go around. But if there's something that's a little bit more difficult to convey through words, then I will just go and do the little sketches and then send them over for approval. But those are the ones that I usually end up going and cleaning up more just to make sure because it's, it's, it's a little bit more difficult when you don't have as much info and you've kind of got to run with the idea on your own and sketch it out a little bit. Anyways, getting on to sorting the lines out and I try and keep my line art to a consistent kind of size with all of these so it's not too big and it's not too weighted, there's not too much line variation in these. Um, I will put a tiny little bit just for some line weight, but I don't want to make it too muddy. Like I said, when it shrinks down, then everything's going to kind of blur together a little bit. So if I've got any massive chunks of black in there, then it's not going to look great. The only exception I have with that is when I put the thick outline around the edge, but that's just so it stands out against any kind of background that it's put on. I'm also going to do that in a quicker way than I usually do, just by using my uh, thickness altering brush so that it changes the thickness of the lines around the outside and clean that up by just selecting around everything else. It's also why it's really useful to have these little squares as well, because if you go outside of the lines, you can just go and select around it and clean it up if you want to, if you want them to look like presentable just in the layered file and start slapping on some base colors as well using the fill tool just blocking them out drawing out the shapes as well and then we're gonna go and select some different shading to put on and I'm trying to keep these just a little bit more towards kind of yellowish colors I think and then I go and put some other colors that'll work nice with that over the top what I usually do is think about complementary colors when I'm doing this sort of stuff and I will make my base colour be more towards one and then I will make my shading be more towards the opposite so that they contrast nicely with each other and we get a little bit of variation in the colours and the gradients. And that's something you can see me doing in the cell shading as well, the way that I do that and put different overlays and things over the top and the kind of colours that I use um, and how I explain the base tones that I pick. So I'll put a link to that tutorial as well where I explain how I do my cell shading at the end of this video. What I'm going to be doing as well is just putting a little bit more of a warmer colour over the top of these because they look a little bit flat at first but if you put, if you put a gradient of kind of a warmer colour over the top it brings them out just a little bit more. So I'm just going to finish putting all of these little bits of shading down on everything and then we're going to get some different overlay or hard light layers on the go just to pop out some more of that red and yellowish and orange colours so that they're really nice and warm. And then just put in a few last little details of gradients and stuff. I'm going to change the colour of my dude's shirt here because it's kind of blending into his beard a little bit too much and I think if it's on a darker background as well it's just going to kind of blend into that. So I'm going to swap it for a lighter one so that we get more contrast in the values there and just a few last little bits of a shading on there. Also if you do have all of your emotes kind of on a sheet like this, it's a little bit easier to go around and pick similar colours that you're using um, in a single thing. It just makes it kind of easier, you don't have to go turning on and off any layers like you would have to if you just had them on a single kind of size for one of them and had a bunch of them layered on top of each other. What I usually like to do is think of the entire piece that I'm working on as sort of a colour palette where I can just go and eye drop stuff. So even though it's kind of a thing that I'm working on, I will use it as my colour palette to go and eye drop different colours from it. And just moving on to these next ones, which like I mentioned before, are a little bit cleaner with the initial sketch because I knew exactly what we were going for because I already had references for the kind of expressions that were going on. They're just kind of based on emotes that already exist. This one will probably be a better expression of the way that I use colours as well because I'm going to be putting down sort of yellowish and purple colours that are already going to complement each other but then I'm going to bring in a little bit of red just to make them pop. 
Um, and we're kind of going to go for that yellow, orange, purple sort of color scheme. So I'm just getting that lighter purple in. I'm keeping the skin tones more towards the yellow, like I mentioned. And then we're going to bring more of the red in later with the overlays. Also using a little bit of bright pink because I thought that worked quite nice with the purple. And quickly just a little bit of a hint of more of a coral color for the shading on the faces. Something else that I also do as well is to purposefully put shading underneath the eyebrows to block that out as a shape as well because like I mentioned with the shape of the eyes you're going to be reading an emotion for that and also from the shape of the mouth and also from the shape of the eyebrows so it just helps to mix in that gap and kind of bring it into a single shape on its own in between the eyes and the eyebrows so that that also is going to indicate the sort of emotion that's going on and help it read a little bit better while it necessarily doesn't make sense <laughs> with the kind of lighting that's going on it's a purposeful kind of stylistic and color choice so that it does read a little bit better when it's small and you can see me flipping the lines on and off and with that it still kind of shows through just with the blocks of colour. This is something that I'll do under the chin as well to define that shape and to make the line of the jaw show up a little bit clearer and show around the edges of the face so that that's defined clearer, like more like a kind of emoji because anything that's past the face isn't really going to be that important because it's the emotion on the face that we're trying to read. And we're done with those, let's shift on to the next one, which are going to be some little Canadian maple leaves with silly faces on them. And I, I absolutely love drawing these little pog emotes. I, lo I love the shape of the face. It gives me sweet bro and hella Jeff flashbacks. Anyways, I, I I do like I like this set because they are kind of more like emojis in that they're just a little shape with a face on them. I also like that I got to make them kind of curvy as well and all the different little leaf shapes as well as the colours in them because uh, red's kind of difficult to work with so I did have a little bit of a fight with these so it, it, was, it was kind of difficult but they ended up nice and I like them. I'm also working on an icon for my dude here who I am going to be finishing off just at the end of the video after I've finished the emotes off, but I'm just drawing him from the references that I've got at the side there. And I'm going to be finishing the icon off in the usual way that I do cell shading, rather than the more selective way of shading that I've mentioned that I do with the little emotes. Anyways, let's go and start cleaning up the lines on the amount so that they're a little bit cleaner and I'm making sure that I'm getting the shape right. I wanted to make sure I was getting the shape of the leaf right on these because it's kind of pointy and weird, but I also want that little bit of movement in the sort of line of motion that I've put in, that curve right down the middle, which is something that I don't really, I don't really usually do that when I um, draw people and things uh, where you'd expect someone to use kind of a line of motion. Uh, I tend to just do it a little bit more wibbly wobbly, but with these it was kind of appropriate for the way that I want them to move and curve. They're sort of like just a, just a pointy sheet of paper. I was trying to think of them as just a sheet of paper at first and then kind of draw on where all the points on them would be. I really like these ones actually. I think they're my favourite out of the set of all of them that I've been drawing on this video. I, I, re I really like these ones a lot, especially that little angry one as well. <laughs> I had a little bit of an issue with starting the colouring on this, like I mentioned earlier, because I kind of like that reference picture that I've got up at the top that's a more realistic leaf that I was using uh, to figure out the shapes properly, and I thought, oh, maybe it'd look nice with that kind of gradient on it, having it from red through to the more yellowish-orange colour, but when I went and put it on, I really didn't like the way that it looked. I thought it was kind of taken away from the more iconic red that you get on the flag, but I did manage to fix it and get it more towards the kind of colours that I wanted to use by taking a little bit of the gradient off and bringing the colours in it more towards sort of a corally, very red orange so that it did have a little bit of difference in the colour but it was more just focused on the red and more being kind of monochrome. Anyways, just getting all these lines finished up and like I usually do, I will just fill in mouths and eyes with just a single block of colour because it's going to make it easier for me to go and change the line colour later just by going over it or painting in anything on the inside. Like if I want to draw a tongue or something, I will just go and paint that into the liner on the same layer um, so that I can keep the transparency lock on and just keep it within those kind of boundaries. Um, yeah, you can see now I'm kind of struggling with the oranges and not really liking it. It's just looking a little bit too autumn rather than um, like the usual red that you'd see. 
so I carry on messing with it for a little bit. I think maybe it'd look cool to put the veins on the leaves. Let's try doing that and see what it looks like. I tried putting ingredients on that and seeing if that looked nice, but I didn't really like it very much. It wasn't looking great. So eventually got to the point where I was like, yeah, let's not work on this anymore. Let's stop and just block a different color down and try some different colors out. So this is where I got more into the color, a little bit of corally, coral, 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 coral colors. <laughs> and tweaked it just a little bit so that it was just slightly more towards pink and then we're a lot closer to that nice kind of red but we've also got a little bit of variation in the colors and then just noodling out a little bit more with all of those veins on the leaves and bringing it up a little bit more saturated and then putting some more details on and then going and putting a bunch of shading on just to bring out the shapes a little bit more and I decided that bringing it more towards the yellow just really wasn't working. It was it was not looking good. It was making it too orange. So I just put it to be a little bit more desaturated and more just towards white so that it works with the colors that are underneath. And like I said, it's a little bit more monochrome. And also again, just making it kind of chunky like that. Um, with this one as well, I did go and put a little bit of shading onto the eyeballs, just, just a tiny bit because I thought they looked a little bit bright in comparison to all the darker, darker red, so I would put just a tiny bit of shadow on them just to fix them a little bit. And going and filling in the mouth with the colour that I uh, just picked on the colour wheel, so uh, just, just have something darker in there and not lose that big dark space that we've got for the mouth that's defining that kind of shape. I think I also did go and put just a tiny little bit of a more orange colour over the top just to make it pop because after I put in all of that really saturated red down the bottom it wasn't looking quite as bad so it's kind of evened out just towards the end with the colours. Um, also with the shading I went and did that kind of similar to my usual cell shading style. Um, just checking the edges as well and seeing what they look like and those are finished Now I've just got to go and finish the icon so that the set is done. And I'm going to be using a lot of the same kind of colours in this so that they all work together nicely but also introducing a bit of blue so we've got some nice contrast in the background and it's going to work nice just with kind of a soft baby blue against that red. Um, we're not going to get too much of the kind of hurt your brain kind of contrast that happens when you put red and blue next to each other if I make one of them kind of less saturated. Let's just finish off this line art and then we will go and start putting some colours down. I'm going to go with sort of more yellowish in the base colours as well. And then that's going to play really nicely off of the soft blue we're going to put in the background and also work with the nice red that's going to be on the go in his shirt and in the shading as well. I'm not sure if you guys think it, but I usually think that when I put flats down they look really kind of bad and nasty. Uh, I think it's usually because I go for a more yellowish tone. Um, in, in the flats that I use, but it's because it kind of pulls it more around to a muddy light colour that washes it out, sort of, um, but once I start going and putting all of the darker shading and everything on with the more saturated colours to play off of it and work with it, then it seems to even it out a little bit more and I don't dislike it as much. Um, I, I think that's just the thing with flat colours though, they never look too interesting when you're just putting the base colours down, it's all of the other little bits that balance it out, like the saturation and um, the contrast that you get between those light flats that you've put down and the darker shading that you're putting on that will really make it pop out more. Also thanks to the commissioner for letting me use the references in the video and everything and during streams and to post with the uh, icon as well on the little version that I posted of the set because I, I don't seem to get that as much anymore. It's usually people that just want private stuff done and don't want me showing the refs. So it's nice when I get to show the refs to everyone so that you guys can see my process. Uh, anyways, yeah, just the last little details and we're done. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope this helped. If it did, give us a like, share if you think it'll help someone else, and subscribe for new videos on Fridays. There'll be links down in the description to everywhere that I post stuff, as well as the Discord group if you want to come chat out stuff with us, as well as a link to my commission information. Lastly, here's some links to the videos that I've referenced in this one to do with cell shading and also blocking down colours in Manga Studio and Clip Studio. So, uh, yeah, th th thanks for watching, lads. B b bye. <laughs>